actor, author, certified life coach, encourager, family man, dynamic inspirational speaker, and so much more. Welcome to my podcast, Get Your Positivity with Harold Keith. All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another episode of Get Your Positivity with yours truly, Harold Keith. I am so glad that you are here and you're joining me yet again. Now, before I get started on what I came to talk about, let's talk about this, okay? Let's talk about how crazy season three has been so far. Now, I know some of you are just now getting caught up to Get Your Positivity with Harold Keith. You didn't even know it was a podcast. You had no idea there was two other seasons. Well, that's because we weren't seeing each other. Well, I mean, you're still just looking at me, but we weren't here, okay? We were just audio, but now we have a visual component and I'm so grateful for it. So season three is something fresh and new. So the good news is if you're just getting on to what this movement is on about, you can go back and get caught up on where we started from to where we are right now. Doesn't that sound like life? Like sometimes you can look and see where you've been Take that journey and realize where you are and why you have to refuse to go backwards. All right. So listen, it started off with a great interview from Lisa Smith out of Texas. Shout out to you. You did a great job. Try me with some of those questions, but it's all good. It was a great episode. Then we moved on and we were cooking it up with Chef Joanne. Let me tell you, that girl can cook and blessings are raining down on her. I think she's at some expo or something going on right now, but I know major things are happening in her life. So if you didn't catch that episode, make sure you catch up on it because then you can also start to identify the things that God is doing in your life. And for those who are like, well, I don't really know about, look, all great things are coming your way as long as you submit to the process. Now, listen, then we moved on from there, okay? And we went to Can't Stop, Won't Stop with Filet. And he talked about his journey, his transition from New York to LA and why he refused to quit and what kept him going. And, and then we just wrapped up the episode that you made me release early. OK, with Coach LaVita Lovey Whitfield, where she came on and told her truth. And we talked about how the storm <laughs> blessed her. And I know you've been through some storms. I go through them, too, and understand that they will bless you. We went to church. Say it with me. We went to church on that episode and I didn't expect to take it there. I know some of you are just now learning this about me, but I'm finally accepting some of my gifts. I've talked to you about opening up gifts and all of that, but I'm finally accepting it and living in it. So unapologetically. And one of the things that's a major topic is just the truth. You know, you have to operate in your truth. Just because it's your truth doesn't mean everyone's going to see it as so. But if you know what you know and you know who you know, it all work out the way it's supposed to. Your truth will set others free. Your truth will set clarity to the heart. Your truth will heal you from your circumstances. So with that being said, I'm excited about what has happened. I have some guests coming up um, that I'm excited about, an episode called Women in Ministry. I have an episode coming up like Choose to Love Again. There's so, so many different things. And remember, this is the podcast where it's Real life, real issues, real experiences, real positivity with real people. So when you see me post up questions and stuff, answer them. The world might need to hear a word or some guidance or some advice from you, your testimony. So please participate in those things. And now that I've gotten out of the way, I'm sorry, I just had to acknowledge that because it has been such a journey and I'm so grateful for where I am. I... I, I didn't see this coming, but for a long time, I knew something was coming, but I didn't know what it was. So with all that being said, the reason why we're here today, this episode is titled The Untold Truth. And I know the subtitle to this is 10 Years and Then Terminated. And 
let me just be like I always am with you. Let me just be very honest. I was still a little hesitant on this. Um, but when you're being obedient, you have to be obedient. You can't say yes to God and then no to what he asks you to do. <laughs> um, and so I sit here because I've been on a beautiful 10 year journey with a company that a beautiful company that has grown me, exposed me to my gifts, and has really trained me to be where I am right now. And I'm grateful. I really am grateful for that. Um, and for some of you who are just joining, I know some of you know my journey, some of you don't. And so I'm going to just do a rewind and then pull you back in to where I am right now, the lessons I learned on the way, and hopefully this will bless your life. So today it's no guess. The only person and the only thing, the only element that's showing up is the truth and it's my truth and I'm not apologizing for it. This is not set out. Let me just, for all my tea people out there, I don't have my mug with me, but for all my people who think you coming just to catch the tea, I hope you're ready for how it digests. Okay. I hope you're ready. All right. So just to get started on my journey, I was hired for this company, right? And I was in a little old Delaware and I had the opportunity within six months to move to Florida and leave my family behind and made the sacrifice, moved to Florida. Um, great times. Um, built a very close relationship with the CEO and, and the family. They became what I perceived at the time to be family. Um, you know, I had a coworker that moved here with me. Shout out to Tiffany Shamir. Love her to death. My sister still to this day. And we came out here. We were on this journey together. Um, I'm talking about traveling around the world, meeting amazing people, met some of you, my biggest supporters, and I'm grateful for you. Um, and my close, some of my closest family now, family. Um, so journeys, events, stages, launches, um, reveals, out of the country. First reason why I had to get a passport, got lost on a cruise, found myself back in, all kinds of stories, okay? Great times. Um, and was able to lead and groom and grow and encourage others and do what I believe that the mission statement stood for from the heart. And when you talk about loyalty, if you want the definition of loyalty, look at my journey with this company. 10 years, you know, going through ups and downs, being cut part time, losing all of your extra 401ks, all your benefits being put on 1099 without notice, all kinds of things that you had to deal with every day. You walked into the office, it was something different going on sometimes. You know, I, I learned lesson number one on this journey. What I learned was I don't want to see what you can do for me when everything is good. I want to see how you treat me when everything isn't so good, because that is how your heart will operate. I wanna see how you treat me in your times of desperation, all right? So that's just point number one, we're gonna keep it moving. Um, so live this great journey, loved and learned a lot about myself and, and what it is and, and something has been bothering me for some time now and it's time to release it. Um, I don't know about you, but there are things that I know that we hold on to sometimes and we think we're over it because we deal with it in private, but sometimes we have to let it out. Sometimes we have to really live in our truth and own our truth so that we can really launch forward, enhance, move forward, and really free ourselves of that situation. So I want to do a special shout out right now to Joanne Thomas. I want to do a special shout out to Coach LaVita. I want to do a special shout out to Coach Ariana Vanessa. I want to do a special shout out to those who have been encouraging me and allowing me to walk in my path, find things my way, but also encouraged me to live and speak my truth. And more importantly, speaking your truth will close out misinterpretations, the rumors, because I heard some things out there about myself and I was shocked. I had to write some of these down. Some of them were good. Some of them were good, but others, I don't know too much. All right. So 
I just wanted to speak my truth and hopefully it blesses your life. And if it's for you, it's for you. If it's not, it's okay. But at the end of the day, how you feel is none of my business. <laughs> I know what God has for me. I know what God's working on. And I'm going to say yes to that and not yes to your opinions. So <sighs> the biggest thing that bothered me is for so long, so many people felt as if I made a choice to leave the company that I invested so much time in, so many ideas in, so much family times in, relationships didn't work out because of my commitment to the business. It, it's a lot, you know, it was a lot, but I was willing to do it because I was loyal to no end. And I believed in what I believed in. I believed in leadership. I believed in what I was being sold. And people have been under the impression for so long that someone being there 10 years, staying there through COVID, being the last original team member there, that I chose to leave. I chose to pack my bags, go to LA and pursue my movie career, my acting career. And that hasn't been the case. I let people believe it. I let it be perceived to be that way, but that's not the reality. That's not the truth. The truth is just like everyone else from the original staff during that time, we were let go. We were fired. We weren't given an option. <laughs> no matter how many things were sacrificed, we weren't given an option. We were fired. And it didn't feel good. I started walking into the office towards the end of my days Things were missing from my desk that I purchased. <laughs> Training people to do things that I've done for years, that normally there's a process to get to that point to be trained. Giving busy work, being taken away from communicating and leading in the way that I do and shining in my gift. And even on the day that I was terminated, I had to make a difficult decision. Now, there will be people who will tell you it was over for a while, but because of the people and because of what I believed in, I stayed. I stayed. And hmm. I stayed. And on that day, I knew it was over. But what I didn't get was a pre-conversation saying that we're coming to a close. Someone who's been there the longest, stayed up the latest, done the, ooh, stepped in the middle and done some, some things that were against really what I embody, and yet I didn't get an opportunity or the heads up to say, hey, this is coming to an end. Instead, it was done not right. I had to make a decision to come back and say, listen, let's have a conversation because I knew it. I seen it before. I seen how other people were treated, forced out, use them up until the last minute of the day and then let them go. But yet we were required to give a two weeks notice. And if we did it that way, then it was an issue, but it's okay for that to be projected on others. So I had to walk into an office with someone who I looked at as my family. Ride or die. We've been through it all within the business. I, I stopped talking to people I cared about for the business.
I left my phone on Ringer for the business. I took work home for the business. I sacrificed going to football games. I sacrificed being there in important moments. I had family at points waiting outside for me for over an hour for the business. The compensation didn't match what I produced, nor did the circumstances, yet I was still staying. And that's nobody's fault but my own because God was telling me something. But because of the love of the people, I held on to the point where I allowed someone else to make a decision for me. So I walked into that office and I said, we have to talk. And they said, yeah, we have to talk. We will talk and we'll talk after your lunch. And I was like, in my mind, there's no point in even going anywhere because there's nothing for me to do. You took everything away from me. I already packed up my stuff that day. That morning, I spent the morning not working, packing up my stuff because I knew it was over because of how I was being treated. Yes, me, the one coming in during COVID. No masks in the office. The one coming in, staying out late. The one doing lies. The one, yes. Committed, loyal. I sat down and... The one thing I can appreciate is the confirmation that God gave me, even in this disrupting situation. And the reason why I was let go was not for any, and I quote, not for any reason, but a revelation. Have you ever been told that when you're being let go? But that wasn't about the person saying it. It was God reconfirming what he already told me. God tells you things. God prepares you for things. And then it'll come back to you if you missed it. And the situations that matter the most in your life. That was a pivotal moment for me. 10 years at a company. My whole life here in Florida based on a move with this company. My survival based on this company. And here we are, it's all over because of a revelation. And it's not what was done, but how it was done that hurt. So I still, in my hurt, had to pull it together, do a live for the sake of the people. And that's what I said, for the sake of the people, let's go live. Because I didn't want anyone who's still connected to that to get caught up in something that has nothing to do with them and their money. So I went live and said my goodbyes and it was perceived as if I was going to LA and that's what it is. But just cause I brought up the conversation about LA doesn't mean that's where I was moving. That doesn't mean that's what I was pursuing. I was still loyal. I was still here. So I left that office that day, got in my car. I felt so free but so broken because I didn't see it happening that way. So people are wondering, oh, so you went to go shoot? Yes, I shot a movie behind the scenes. I helped out with the movie. That's good. It's coming out soon. Yes. Yes, I was working on other projects, but that's not how it went. I went into a depressed state for months because life as I knew it was over and, and, and I felt betrayed or bamboozled by someone I believed in because I knew when I left that day, we would never speak again. Mm. So let's clear that up. Lisa did that already. I'm not in LA. I'm still in Florida and I'm finding my way. You ask what Harold Keith is doing right now. He has his own business. Yes, he's doing life. Yes, he's doing a lot of things, but 
There's no clear lane yet. God is developing and working on things and exposing me to who I am and who he's called me to be. So truth be told, I was in a depression. I was hurt. I was upset. So I could never talk about this. It even hurt to get on Facebook. It hurt to talk to certain people. I was broken because I couldn't understand for the life of me. How did it get here? But <laughs> here's some lessons I had to learn. Number one, business is not God. Business is not God. Number two, be mindful of how you meet people and the positions that they're in because positions change. Some of the sacrifices that were made, taking a pay cut, going part-time, losing all benefits and having to pay them from on your own, out of your own pocket and no 401k, no vacation, um, it was rough. And I guess before I couldn't speak on these things because it was coming from a bitter flesh space. And I didn't want to believe what was happening. But here we are now and I'm clear. Understand that when it's time for you to go, move when God tells you to move. Listen to what God is telling you to do or else you will set yourself up for a heartbreak because people disappoint people. Hurt people hurt people. I couldn't be upset anymore with this individual or with these people because People only do what they know how to do. And they only do what they feel is best, even if it's not. It could be a complete mess. But people go into survival mode and sometimes get so laser focused on what they have going on that they forget what they're called to do. So, In my truth, I've learned that don't procrastinate on God's word. When he tells you to move, you move. Don't sacrifice the things that matter you matter to you the most for a business because when that business is gone let me tell you who was there for me those people who matter to me the most life is meant to be lived you have to live it and if that job is not for you anymore let it go just because you started somewhere doesn't mean you have to finish there but do it on your terms I've also learned that you gotta be careful sometimes who you feel is your family. Because even with family, that doesn't mean you guys speak the same spiritual language. It doesn't mean you speak the same heart language. It doesn't mean that you speak the same love language at all. Pay attention to the root of how you meet people and the relationship Take it for what it is. Don't make it be something that is not because that's a mistake that we make. We buy into an idea. We buy into a vibe. We buy into a thought. And then we're sold out for this, this, this thing, this, this human, this person, this, this item here on earth. 
when we're not supposed to idolize any of that. My Shiro, my hero, my 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 superwoman. My, no, 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 no. There's only one that gets all that praise because they never fail. They never let you down. When you are down, they pick you up. They provide a way. I remember when I went part time and I couldn't even pay my rent. I had to do things I never thought I was <laughs> would ever have to do just so I can keep my place of residence. All because I was still sold out to a job. And those were signs that my journey was over. No raise in four years. Those were signs that my journey was over because I no longer was getting fed the meals that I deserve to eat. Aren't you tired? Aren't you tired and sick of just operating because you have to pay a bill? Aren't you tired of just sitting there and knowing your truth, knowing what you're worth and then being insulted every time you see your paycheck? Go back to school, figure it out. Find out what your passion and what your purpose is. Find you again because these jobs, these false things, the social media, all of that will have you forgetting who you are and whose you are. And just because somebody can pray and just because somebody says they believe in God does not mean that they do not fall short, does not mean that they do not get lost, does not mean they should be prophesizing over your life. Things I learned after my termination. The truth is really all you have to stand on. And understand, if someone's offended by your truth, then they're not living in theirs. What they say nowadays, period. Yep, that's what they say. If people are offended by your truth, then they're not living in theirs. There are a lot of hurt people in this world, a lot of hurt people that have been a part of my journey that I had to talk to and, and, and let them know what's going to be okay. But I never thought in the life that I was living, it could be me, and it was. And I had to figure out how to shake off depression. I had to figure out how to keep smiling. I had to keep figure out how to keep people motivated and live in my purpose and figure out my gifts. I had to figure out how my bills were going. I had to figure it all out. Because for so long, I thought life was good when really it was a boot camp to get me to where God is taking me. Not where I am, where God is taking me. Lessons learned through the termination. You know, we often feel as if Hmm, I don't want to say this. We often feel as if when we make an impact on an organization or in an atmosphere that it secures our position in that space, right? But I want you to wake up I want you to hear me clearly, and I want you to realize just because you make an impact in an organization, in a place, in an atmosphere, does not mean your presence should remain there. Sometimes you have to come in and shift the energy and show people what they could be doing, show people and remind them of who they are. And then it's time for you to move on to your next calling, your next location. As I did my interview, 
with Coach Levita and and after some of the feedback and, and the people I've heard from since then, I've realized that on my journey there, I hurt a lot of people because I was trying to prove something to someone else. So today I want to say, just like I apologize to Levita, that if I hurt you along my journey of growth in the position that I was in, I apologize because it was not personal for me during that time. But now I'm taking things a little bit more personal because there's some of you I love and I adore and I miss you so much, but I allowed someone else to dictate how I operated and communicated and lived my life to a certain degree. If you have to compromise, who you are, what you stand for, for the sake of a position, quit. Let it go. It's not worth it. You have so much more to bring to the table. So many other things that you're dealing with. There is nothing like being free. So here I was, free from that storm, right? It seemed like it was a hurricane at that point. But God took off those handcuffs and put them in my hand. He put them in my hand. And God said, what are you going to do with them? And for months, I sat there and I held on to them. But today, a little while ago, actually, but today officially, I'm letting them go. Letting them go. I want you to forgive those who had hurt you and realize they know not what they do. And even those who do, you reap what you sow. So don't focus on that because what they got going on is none of your business. Focus on what it is that you are supposed to be doing right now in your life. God did not bring you this for. He didn't take you through that. He didn't help you through this storm. He didn't, he didn't do all of this just to leave you behind. You don't need to stand in front of a room. You don't need to have the support of a person to know that you are worth it and you're a force to be reckoned with. Life is meant to be lived. Truth is meant to be told. And sometimes it's your truth that will save lives. So for the people I'm talking to who have been hurt, let it go. I know. I know. I was there too. But I am no longer allowing things that were, hmm, I don't want to say this. I am no longer allowing things that should not occupy any space in my life to rent free. Forgive for your sake. Pray on it and move on. Be okay realizing and understanding that you may not know all of why it happened or what it happened for, but realize that when you get to where God is telling you and where God is showing you and where God wants you to be, that all the answers you need are gonna be in that moment. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for my journey. I'm grateful for the times where I could depend on what I perceive to be family in times. I'm grateful for the ups and the downs. I'm grateful for the times when I needed, I needed those people to be there and they were. I'm grateful for it all. But it's something so beautiful about realizing that you're in the frame the whole time versus stepping out and taking a look back at that frame <laughs> and realizing that the writing was always on the wall. 
you just weren't listening. So we oftentimes in our truth want to blame somebody else for what's going on in our lives, but you can't blame them. They're human too. Forgive them. You have to have a self-check moment. You have to ask yourself, how did I get here? How did I allow myself to get here? Then hold yourself accountable for your part in the activity. When God told you to move, you said no. When God showed you what your life was looking like for real, for real, you stayed. Let it go. Today is a new day. And this plays on your depression. This plays on your self-esteem. It plays on a lot of things because we care. But stop thinking about people who don't think about you. Stop thinking about people who don't think about you. If you unfriended me from Facebook, if you did all that, then okay, that's fine. I'm letting it go. Those who are meant to be on this journey with me will be. Those who aren't will not. Those who are taking offense, I'm sorry, but that's your problem, not mine. This is my truth. And to sum up the truth, the truth is I made a lot of mistakes in finding who I am by being committed to something that should only have been a portion of my life, not everything. So the one truth I wanted to be told is everything didn't end with rainbows and sunshine and smiles and kubayas as it was perceived to be. The truth is I was hurt. I went through depression. I questioned a lot of things. I even had to ask myself, what was I really a part of? Was I really part of a ministry? Or was I a part of something else? Because any place that you're a part of and you're an asset and they don't allow you to grow, but they're able to grow, you have to question something. For those who are stuck and don't know what to do next, those who have forgotten who you are, those who are in between, I need you to understand that you are not the standard definition and you need to believe in yourself again. The only way I got through my situation was by reading my own book. <laughs> Not your standard definition, believe it. And I'm gonna read this to you and then I'm gonna let you go, right? Often in life, we get stuck. We get to a place where we are lost and forget the core values of our successes in life. We begin to get frustrated with our dreams irritated with our goals and neglecting of ourselves. In these times, we need to hold on to our core values and simply just believe. Believe in tomorrow, our dreams, our goals, our purpose, our story, our journey, and more importantly, ourselves. When I say believe, I'm not referring to the standard dictionary definition. I'm speaking a new normal for your life and an important ingredient to keep you from getting stuck and staying paralyzed for too long. It is our time to get unstuck, get out of your own way and expand your mindset into your actions. It's time to prove all of those who are against you wrong. And most importantly, time to step into the person you were uniquely designed and created to be. If you're ready for more, if you're at a place where you don't know what your next move will be, or if you're in the search of fulfilling a void, this book is for you. It is time to let go and 
Be the better version of you. Embrace your growth. Live beyond your potential. Increase your knowledge. Evaluate your strategy. Value your journey and execute with your passion. After all, if you're going to be successful in life, you not only have to invest in yourself, but you have to believe in yourself. Believe in yourself when people are writing you off. Believing, believe in yourself when people are ruling you out because you've outgrown them. Believe in yourself when you become the mentor to the mentor that used to be yours. Believe in yourself when no one else in this world does because God has you covered. You just have to get out of your own way. Live in your truth and forgive as you level up. So with all of that being said, I am free. Those handcuffs are gone. My wings, they're open, they're flying, they're soaring. I'm living my life unapologetically. For those, again, who were offended by anything I had to say, then live in your truth and understand this is my truth. You don't have to agree with it. You don't have to support it, but it's mine and I'm going to live in it unapologetically. Things aren't always what they seem. And when there's a whole lot of changes in a situation, you have to ask yourself, how did it get there? And what am I a part of? I'm going to close out this episode with two songs. And for those who are watching, you're going to have to YouTube, Google, uh, Apple Music, all this on your own. But for those who are listening, you will be able to hear them right after this. And for me, this song is called He Understands by Chandler Moore. He Understands. And then for those who are listening, who have been hurt, I want you to take a moment to listen to The Blessing by Melvin Chris Bell featuring Miranda Curtis, The Blessing. And you can hear those for those who are listening to the audio right now. For those who are looking, look those songs up. They will bless your life. And understand that no one no one can write your story for you. No one can write your ending for you. Just because a door closes doesn't mean that it's over. It just means that you have a bigger room to walk into. You have a new house to walk into. There's something else with your name on it. Victory is already yours. You just have to get to where God is calling you to get to, to be in position. I hope that through my truth and through you seeing that, I overcame all of those things and did it with a smile, even though it hurt, that you can too. Believe in the power of you. I'll see you on our next episode of Get Your Positivity with Harold Keaton.